Uh, let's play and we will begin. I couldn't hear you playing the last time, so someone can please play, we can begin. Let's pray. Loving Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, Lord. Lord, I thank you for bringing us together once again, Lord, to know your word. Lord, I sincerely pray for the pastor. Lord, you enamel with uh, the Holy Spirit, Lord, whatever the things, Lord, she is going to speak to us, Lord. Lord, I do believe, Lord, through your spirit, Lord, she is going to teach us. I pray for internet connection, Lord. Uh, pray for uh, the good connection, Lord. And I pray for everyone, those who are uh, listening uh, to Pastor, Lord, you bless us that wherever we are, Lord, we're able to consider to you, Lord. We thank you. Praise you. Jesus, name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. Um, we were talking about the anointing, and I will do my best to, you know, cover as, as much as possible in today's class. Um, so in the last class, we said that, you know, one of the keys for us to manifest the supernatural is the anointing. And I shared with us that every believer um, carries the Holy Spirit's the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in them. And this presence of the Holy Spirit uh, is what leads us, okay, strengthens us uh, as a child of God. However, we said that the Holy Spirit upon us is what we are referring to as the anointing. The Holy Spirit, His presence, His power in us, and the release of that presence in Power, uh, is what we are uh, referring to as the anointing. Okay, and as the anointing is released, we can see um, supernatural works such as healings, miracles. Uh, uh, we we can see deliverances. So so many things happen in the presence of God and the uh, release of the power of God. Now in the last class. We looked at you know, a couple of things that help us understand how to activate this anointing. In other words, how to get the um, this power of God you know, moving from our lives so that we can minister in the supernatural. That's what our focus is because um, all of us as believers, we want to see the supernatural manifest. So one thing we said in the last class, from Ephesians 3, 7, we saw how Paul says that he does the ministry with the gifts and the grace which was given to him. Now, that word grace, I realized later that, you know, that could have caused a little bit of confusion. So grace means unmerited favor of God. Uh, but here in this context, grace means the enabling of God. Okay, so the grace of God or the gift of God, which was given to Apostle Paul, with the help of that, he was able to do the ministry. So what we are first, what we are saying is that the anointing can flow through the grace and the gift of God over our lives. All of us, every single one of us in this class, I'm sure you know we have our own. Uh, gift uh, as far as you know life is concerned so I'm not talking just you know what you do in church maybe you are gifted as far as media is concerned or you're a very gifted writer or you know we talked about that abilities that God has given each one of us so the anointing is expected to flow in the area of our gifting so if some of us are gifted as singers we would see that there is a release of the power and the presence of god through the gift that god has given you know that particular person who can sing similarly when we identify the gifts so when i use the term gifts not so much referring to the gifts of the spirit but more to the abilities the abilities that God has given us. Similarly, grace. Grace is the enabling, the empowering 
of God which has been given to each of us. So we may have the grace to teach or we may have the grace to lead in worship. We may have the grace to prophesy. So based on the giftings and the grace of God, we will see the release of the anointing of God. Anointing, what is it? I just said it is the release of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So if I want to see the supernatural through the release of the anointing, I must function with the gifts and the grace which is upon my life. Okay. So it's as simple as that. That's what we were trying to explain in the last class. So go with your area of gifting. Go with your area of grace. Now, this is not to say that God will not anoint uh, maybe you know some other ability in us when required. Let's say you know you are generally a teacher of the word but on a particular uh, uh, you know in a particular yes. service or something yeah, i can hear somebody mm -hmm. okay we'll have to mute so, yeah sure but in a particular service let's assume okay that uh, there's nobody to lead worship. So the person who is gifted in teaching for just that service decides, okay, let me lead the people in worship. It is possible that their leading in worship is anointed, even though that is not their grace or gift. So god can work through other abilities in us also but those are exceptions generally for each of us if we can identify our area of gifting and grace the anointing will flow in that area so it's not um, good therefore for us to try and compare now we might find that a particular a person is very gifted in, let's say, arts. Uh, they are gifted in, uh, uh, you know, using colors and uh, just putting things together in a beautiful way. If somebody who envies that gift, you know, tries to function uh, in the way that this particular gifted person, I was saying that. Uh, the anointing flows in line with our gifting and, our, and the grace. Um, this is the normal way, but it is possible that as an exception, the anointing flows in some other way as well. Okay, uh, But the important thing is that we recognize what that gifting is. So uh, when we begin to invest more time in that particular gifting, we were talking about this last class, I remember that we will also grow in that particular area okay, where God has called us. Um, so uh, that is what you know. each one of us needs to get a hold of that. Okay, I need to figure out where God's anointing flows, you know, um, through my life. And that is the area where I need to concentrate. Okay, so when you figure that out, then we are no longer trying to compare with somebody else's gift. Maybe the anointing moves, uh, or you can see the power and the presence of God when somebody is teaching. Now, if that's not my area of gifting, I, even if I try to do it, I will not see the release of the anointing. So, the key is figure out the gift and the grace of God and try to move in that direction. And it's also possible 
for the uh, anointing to increase as we develop that gift, as we develop that grace over our lives. Uh, we also said that the anointing accompanies the word. So John 6, 63, Jesus said that my words, they are life and they are spirit. So the more we spend time in the word, you will begin to see that there is a release of the power of God, there's a release of the power and presence of God that comes from the word. We also need to understand that the spirit is very much in line with the word. As 1 John 5, 7 says, the spirit uh, and uh, the word, they are very aligned. And so the spirit will agree with what the word of God says. And which is why I need to take time in the word. I need to spend time meditating upon the word. I need to spend time declaring the word, applying the word. And I will see that there is a greater release of the anointing. A good example is uh, the prophetic gift. So when one begins to take time to study more about the prophetic uh, gift, the, the prophetic, the, the operation of the uh, uh, prophetic in the word of God, one would see that there is a greater release of the gifts, you know, even through their lives. So uh, the anointing, the release of the anointing is associated with the, the word. So this can be true even in the area of healing. I remember once as a little uh, funny experience that uh, there was a particular person who needed deliverance, and uh, you know we got we got this uh, mail from a pastor. He had asked us to go and minister to this uh, this person. A few of us to go together and you know maybe uh, just minister and cast out the demon. So when when I heard that I have to go in for something like this, what I did is I went to all the Gospels. I pulled out every single incident there where Jesus cast out a demon. And I started studying about it. You know, I, I read passage after passage where, you know, Jesus cast out this demon. Jesus cast out that demon. How did Jesus do it? So what is happening? Faith begins to build and you are able to see the release of the power of God in that particular area. So in this case, it was deliverance. So before I went in to minister to that person, uh, my faith was built up and the release of the anointing Basically, it just means the power of God gets released easier if we take time with the word. Okay? So this is true of anything, healing, deliverance, prophetic, uh, uh, whatever, any subject that, that you want to uh, take up and serve people in that area, spend time with the word and you will see a better flow of the power of God. Then we said consecration. Okay. When one is submitted to God, when one is yielded to God, we said that uh, there is a greater flow of the power of God. Okay. So that's understood. Uh, so it's important. It's important for us to uh, keep ourselves consecrated, dedicated. And as the passage in uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2 verses 20 and 21 say, uh, when one gets rid of sin and keeps themselves as a vessel of honor, uh, God's presence and power can take over, you know, through that person. So we must maintain ourselves in consecration before the Lord and expectation. Now, this is also something uh, that we talked about in the last class where we said the reason why usually before ministry, uh, the word of God is taught is so that Faith arises in the hearts of the people and expectation arises in the hearts of the people. No, it's only when there is expectation that God's presence moves. We know later on we will see the uh, things that hinder the move of the power of God. Unbelief comes, you know, as one of the main reasons why sometimes uh, you can have the most anointed worship leader, but Nothing really touches the hearts of the people who are gathered, you know, in a particular place. Why? What happened? Maybe they lack expectation or they lack faith. So the anointing is not able to flow 
so we usually use the word flow because the power of the presence of god it flows and ministers so it's just some language that we are using to understand how this power uh, really does its work so for a better flow of the anointing we need to have hearts of expectation we saw the example of the uh, the lady who came and who touched the hem of uh, jesus's garments and she was able to minister okay so uh, that is how uh, you know the anointing really uh, flows uh, just a moment yeah okay my screen blanked out oh it's blanking out again no no it's okay i'll manage no problem i'll use the pdf post it here Yes, we can, we can carry it. Okay. Yeah. Now, talking about the anointing, uh, we also have to understand that there are different measures of the anointing. You know, when people uh, say anointing, there's a lot of excitement uh, that, hey, you know, uh, somebody carries a particular anointing, I can get the same anointing. Okay. Uh, but when you see in scripture, that's not exactly how the anointing works. Now, why are we talking about it? We said the flow of the anointing, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit ministers to people and the supernatural takes place. So, how does this anointing get, if you want to use the word, transferred to others? You know, the word transfer, the word, uh, some people use the word impartation from one person to the other person. So here are a few basic things that we have to understand about anointing. Anointing comes in measures. So you might have, uh, uh, let's take the example of Moses and the 70 elders. Moses was leading. It was too much of work for him. So the suggestion that came to Moses was, how about you have leaders under you who can also help with managing the people it was a good advice but before he went ahead with that we see that moses um, asked for the anointing of god to fall upon these 70 elders so the anointing fell on them now did they all become uh you know another moses where there 71 moseses because moses's anointing fell on the 70 elders no only a measure of the anointing on Moses was put upon or transferred or imparted, whatever word you want to use, on the 70 elders. When we look at the ministry of Moses, we know that there was an anointing of leadership upon him. He's also known as a prophet. So we saw the many miracles that took place uh, through him in Egypt. All the plagues and everything, and you know, uh, we we see how he went to Pharaoh's court and he demonstrated uh, uh, while the sorcerers competed with him. He demonstrated the power of God and the supernatural. So there was a prophetic anointing. There was an anointing for leadership. Now, when you look at the seventy elders, they primarily got leadership, wisdom from Moses. So only a measure, you could say, was imparted to the. 70 elders similarly so when you look at moses and joshua both of them you know uh, uh, when when there is association we, we will uh, see later on that there can be a connection the anointing can be transferred when there is an association for example people take the example of elijah and elisha okay uh, so moses and joshua they were together there was an association however when you look at the kinds of anointings both of them carried or the power of god the way it ministered through their lives you would see that moses again you know leadership pro uh, prophetic 
Joshua more of a leader for the conquest of giants and the occupation of land. So that's how you know, the anointing manifested through Joshua's life. Now, if you look at the association of Elijah and Elisha, scriptures would tell you that Elisha had uh, like a double okay, number of miracles through his ministry. And he also desired a double portion of the anointing which was upon Elijah's life. So can there be a difference in the measures of the anointing that people carry? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't get transferred in an exact way. That's the point I'm making. So we just have to use whatever anointing we have and the measure of the anointing that we have. Now, can the anointing over our lives increase and grow? Yes, as you grow with that gift, with that grace, you will find that the breakthrough of the presence and the power of God is that much easier, that much faster. You know, uh, if earlier uh, it, it would take about two or three songs for the presence of God to show up, uh, maybe when one is serving in, in worship, you know, over and over and over again and maintaining all the other things, consecration, expectation, all that, what happens? The moment they come, you know, sometimes we heard, we hear people say also, right? Like the moment they open their mouth, we can sense the anointing, the presence and the power of God that, that does the work of God, that does the supernatural. So one can grow in the area of their anointing. There are different kinds of anointings, and I touched about this in the last class. So, based on the giftings, we may classify them as you know, teaching anointing, prophetic anointing, healing, miracle anointing. Uh, people have so many other words that they use, you know, nowadays, which uh, are not even there uh, in the Bible, like you know, an anointing to pray for children. Somehow, you know, uh, one particular person I knew. Whenever they would pray for somebody who didn't have uh, children, there would be a testimony that, oh, okay, you know, they conceived. So we don't know exactly how the power of God works. But with regard to a certain gift and a grace, you know, the power of God is flowing out of our lives. So the key is we've got to recognize it. Oh, okay, you know, I carry the anointing in this area. So let me do it. Maybe counseling. Every time we sit and we minister to people, take time with people, we see that there is a breakthrough or you know, there's an open door or something like that. So uh, you can categorize it based on the area uh, with names, you know, simple names uh, that have to do with the gift. Okay, so we can grow in the anointing. That's also uh, something that we have learned. So we can invest time in growing that anointing. Impartation. Okay, impartation is another very key uh, thing for us to understand. There is an entire sermon uh, at APC that I would recommend for us to go and you know uh, look up a, a, on our website apcw.org from the sermon series. But here, a few key things regarding impartation have been mentioned. So when we talk about impartation, as we've seen earlier, uh, through association, impartation is possible, okay? Because we've seen that in the life in, in uh, people like Moses and Joshua, Elijah and Elisha. So we've seen that. It's possible through association. Impartation is only uh, a measure. So Moses and his leaders. There was a huge difference in the levels of anointings that you know each uh, like the leaders carried and Moses carried. So it wasn't exactly Moses's anointing which was fully imparted to the seventy elders. No, it wasn't. So the seventy mm -hmm. elders were about leading the people. So in the in line with what they needed to do, the anointing was imparted from Moses to them. Okay, so here are the key points we have to understand. A measure of impartation takes place. And the impartation takes place aligned to God's gift and calling on our lives. So just because I associate 
you know, with a with a uh, worship leader. Maybe I I am serving in their ministry, and I don't have the gift of singing. Maybe I cannot sing. I cannot expect that I will, you know, uh, suddenly be able to sing. It's not possible. It's just not possible. So impartation cannot change me as a person and my area of grace and gifting, but the impartation will be aligned to my gift. So let's assume that I am a songwriter, but I can't sing. Just an assumption. The anointing from that ministry can maybe help me flow better in writing songs, but I'm not able to sing. You understand? So it's in line with the gifting and the calling of God for my life. So we cannot assume that, oh, I'll go hang out with this person and that person and the way that person is anointed, it will just rub off on me. Impartation doesn't work like that. And we don't see that in scripture. Okay, let's move on a little bit more to understand about impartation. Impartation cannot come from a person to a person. Impartation is from God. You know, one cannot receive unless it is given to us from heaven. You know, John chapter 3 says, so when uh, Elisha asked Elijah, give me a double portion of the anointing which is upon your life. You know what? Elijah knew that he could not do it. You know, if any of us could give somebody else a double portion, would we not give ourselves a double and a triple and a you know quadruple portion because we can multiply anointing over our own life so that the power of God flows better? But here's the truth: anointing is from God. No human being can give anointing to another human being or to themselves. Elijah knew that, and which is why he told Elisha, Okay, if you see me being, you know lifted up, then you will have what you're asking for. So basically, Elijah told Elisha to pursue God, though it was like asking Elisha to pursue him. He was asking Elisha to pursue God so that Elisha could receive from God. So anointing is from God. No human agent can release anointing impartation on uh, others. You know? So that is something we have to recognize. What is received through impartation must be uh, nurtured and developed. So we said that Moses, you know, he prayed and the anointing of leadership came upon those 70 elders. Now once the anointing comes upon us, it's not uh, like saying, okay, I can sit back and relax now. I am anointed with the anointing, you know, which, which was on the life of uh, such and such a leader. So if one has an impartation of, let's say, leadership anointing, one needs to practice it. One needs to nurture it. One needs to uh, grow in that anointing which has been given to that person. Same thing, you know, applies for healing anointing. One needs to grow. Maybe I have received an impartation because of my association with a particular person. But that doesn't mean I will start flowing like that healing minister of God. Okay? Because, yes, there is uh, you know, some measure of anointing in my life. But I have to grow in it. I have to begin to uh, act by faith and see a release of that anointing. So, uh, class, I just want to ask you, uh, is it okay to take another 10 minutes of your time? Um, if it is okay, I will continue. Otherwise, you know, we will just uh, pick up in the next class. All right. So what I'm going to do is I will continue to finish the class today. Uh, those of us who would need to leave, please feel free. You can leave. Uh, the content will anyway be uploaded you know, on your uh, stream page. So you can come and uh, you know, uh, listen to the rest of the lecture. So we will move ahead.
So yeah, we've understood a little bit about how impartation works. So it's not like a hundred percent that you're with somebody and you become, you know, a carbon copy of of that person and their anointing. So uh, the why are we talking about all these things? See, we are learning the keys, right? Uh, so that I can apply it in my life. Oh, okay. Is this how the anointing works? Fine. So let me find the gift. Let me find the grace of God over my life. I can be associated with good men of God, women of God, ministries. Uh, and surely there can be some measure of anointing which I can receive, you know, uh, through impartation. But I will still need to nurture. I will still need to develop that gift which has been given to me. So now coming to uh, administering the anointing or releasing the anointing of God. Uh, in John chapter 7, Jesus said that uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So in a sense, not that the Holy Spirit flows like what these are all, uh, uh, you know, ways or uh, uh, we are associating the work of the Spirit with water, the way streams of water flow. The work of the Holy Spirit is released like that. Okay? So streams of living water shall flow out of your belly, he said. So that is how. The anointing begins to flow like a river. Uh, so the power of God, we need to be sensitive to how the power of God is actually moving and ministering uh, into the lives of the people. And we must flow uh, along with that. So I will just give you one example. Just this Sunday, you know, we had uh, the sermon on faith and science. And uh, uh, it, it was talking about creator God. Creator God. So as I was sharing about it in the sermon, I knew some key things that I wanted to touch upon. But as I started speaking, as I started speaking, uh, I could just sense I'm using the word anointing, anointing, you know, or a flow. Okay. How do you sense? We know that the spirit. Or the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So when we know the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading us in a certain direction, we sense the flow of the anointing in that direction. So as I was speaking, though my way of emphasizing the text was planned in a certain way, uh, I realized there were some... Uh, teenagers who had come for the first time to church and I could sense such a uh, you know such a deep um, and a powerful love for those teenagers in my heart as if God is is wanting to reach out to them and as if God is wanting to minister to them so I could sense that flow uh, of the anointing and my words were moving in light with saying that you know God is a good God and God um, is a God who loves you. We were talking about, you know, creation and uh, the galaxies and how he has how he has made everything so perfectly. And yet, you know, being such a great God, uh, he still knows you. He knows me. Uh, and and, and uh, there was just a presence of God for salvation, I would say, you know, and leading those people to Christ. And I could I could feel it. So I was moving as the anointing, or you want to call it like a river, in line with where the river is going. So we need to sense, we need to sense the flow of the anointing and move in line with that anointing. That's when we will see the results. And you know, at the end of the service, I called out for the salvation prayer and uh, you know, once again invited. Uh, those people to come back and I'm hoping they'll come back, they'll grow in the Lord. So not just that, there can be a time when the, the river of the Holy Spirit moves in a certain direction, okay, uh, where uh, healings need to take place in, in that uh, group of people who have gathered. So one needs to be sensitive, sensitive to the flow of that 
we are calling the river but we know it's really the uh, the presence of the holy spirit and where that is taking us so how do we administer how do we administer the anointing we can minister by faith okay so you just move in line with what god is putting on your heart now so by faith maybe god would lead us to pray a certain prayer or god would lead us to do something you know if you uh, look at uh, some of the old time tent revivals and healing ministers of god they would put action to what they were saying so they had faith okay in in what they were sensing from the spirit of god and where the anointing was and they began to move in that direction so through our faith we can release the anointing we can release it through touch you, you remember the the lady who touched the hem of jesus's garments that's how the power went out so that's why sometimes you know we touch people we pray for them and there are times when you can sense you can sense okay even uh, more tangibly or in the physical you can sense something like a power being transferred between you and the person whom you are ministering to but these are all things that happen this is what the anointing is and when that happens you know that god is at work god's holy spirit is at work through the spoken word you know, sometimes we release it through the word that we speak you know we might just issue a command and say be healed what happened when you said that or you might uh, just speak to someone and say uh, this is the scripture that god is giving me to give to you the anointing is released through that and god's power starts working in that person's life so these are all ways in which the anointing is released action action you remember uh, the time when uh, there was the, the head of the axe it sank okay elisha what does he do he goes and he he kind of uses a rod he, he goes and stirs that water and the axe begins to float so there are times when god may want us to take action take action okay uh, and the anointing flows if you see john chapter acts chapter 3 where uh, there is a lame man peter what does he do you know he holds him and the bible says that he developed strength in his feet when peter held him and sort of you know raised him up so these are all supernatural things how can this happen we have to be sensitive to the holy spirit so sometimes for the anointing to flow god might want an action from our side we are just waiting and saying i know that there is an anointing you know there is an anointing but god might say do this take oil put it over somebody and pray you do that action whatever that is lay hands on somebody or speak a word over somebody take action when we take action the anointing will flow and the supernatural will be released uh, sometimes the anointing can be transferred through material we see this in acts 19 when uh, peter uh, when uh, paul right the garments which were on his on his body when those garments the scarves they touched people people were delivered from demonic oppression so we might ask the question what is this how can cloth release the power of god over someone but you see even material objects can carry the anointing okay we see that in scripture which is something that we can you know when we know all these things we can use it no wonder there are times when people pray over water have you heard have you heard and seen that you know people pray over water and say ha now you drink it how does it work very simple the power and presence of the holy spirit which is taken up by a material or there are times when people pray over handkerchiefs and they say okay you know uh, take this i prayed over this you will be healed can it work we see that in acts 19 11 there are these unusual manifestations of the holy spirit so the anointing can work through material objects also okay so this is how uh, it, it it works okay let's move on so what are things which can hinder the flow of the anointing unbelief that jesus went to minister 
even there he was limited why because people did not believe so what can hinder the flow of the anointing unbelief so when we go to a particular place to minister uh, it might be helpful to first take some time to build them up in the word so once faith is established what happens there's a better flow of the anointing okay so unbelief can hinder the anointing unwilling to step out and take risks do not quench the holy spirit so 1 Thessalonians 5:19 says so when the anointing of god is leading us in a certain way let's say this has happened sometimes in our services that um, i don't know which year it was i think 2019 january uh, so the location where i where i worship there was one particular sunday when uh, the worship leader started leading in worship and the funny part is we never stopped so after some time when it was turn for the sermon even i sense that there is an anointing of god for worship right now and it's a very rare thing okay we always have our sermons but this particular sunday i felt that i should not go and take that time which god wants to use through the ministry of worship so i just told the worship leader you carry on and that day you know there were uh, i still remember uh, there was at least one uh, man in the congregation who was wailing and crying usually this doesn't happen okay but he was experiencing the presence of god we had testimonies like people saw angels uh, you know uh, coming into the room and uh, people saw light and they had all these experiences but it was important for us to take that step what was the step continue with worship now maybe at times it can be for healing some other step god is saying okay take oil put it on people and pray or god is saying pray in tongues for people or lay hands on people something some step which you and i are being led to take we have to take if we don't take it we will not see the flow of the anointing the anointing will stop okay and scriptures tell us don't quench the holy spirit and that is why we have to be so sensitive what is the holy spirit saying what should i do how should i minister and it's like a river you have to allow the river to flow that's when you will see the manifestation of the supernatural and the works of the flesh will also limit the manifestation of the anointing when we uh, talk about the uh you know the the anointing in the old testament we are told that what was made to uh, uh made for god you know like um, uh, not getting the word right now uh okay can okay, somebody quickly read exodus 30 and verse 32 i think with that we come to an end of uh, the content in our notes uh we can of course take a couple of minutes to ask questions and all that uh hopefully in the next class to clarify you know, more uh matters uh but yeah as far as the content in our notes is concerned we we have touched upon it today uh, so can someone read please from exodus 30 and verse 32 the thing to Exodus chapter 30 verse 32 Do not pour it on men's bodies and do not make any oil with the same formula it is sacred and you are to consider it sacred oh. Yeah so the oil or the preparation which again you see it represents all these terms oil river they represent the power and the presence of the holy spirit so what are we told the uh, preparation which was for god the oil which is prepared for god that it should not be poured on anyone else or anything else so that just goes to show us that the anointing is only meant for god 
and the work of his spirit the anointing is not meant for the flesh or human activity there are times when our flesh takes over where um, the ministry is about exalting a person or the ministry is about you know me getting fame or the ministry is about something to do with the flesh you know pride lust jealousy but the anointing is not meant for the flesh it's meant for god and his work and which is why whenever the flesh comes in we might see that the work of god which is taking place so beautifully that might actually get hindered and the anointing may no longer flow so that's why we have to understand these are all things which will hinder the anointing in my life and in my ministry so i must be careful about not allowing the flesh okay uh, about not um, uh, having unbelief in my heart and i must also be careful to have the courage to step out so if god is telling me do this step out and give it a shot you will see that the power of god begins to flow there so with that i'll wrap up uh, maybe one question or two questions uh, because it's an important subject if there's anything like immediate uh, you could ask we'll quickly address it before we pray and close today's class okay sure so uh you could read through think through and uh, please join in the next class and we'll see you know if there are matters to be addressed with regard to the anointing but i hope uh, you know you've got a hold of anointing as a key all right so thank you everyone for being here together uh, i will request uh, zeli to pray zeli can you please uh, close off with a word of prayer sure let's pray father god we want to thank you so much for this wonderful session which uh, we had today lord we thank you for our pastor nancy for teaching us about the anointing and how to flow lord god whatever we have learned in this session holy spirit continue to minister to us and continue to remind us so that we can flow in the anointing and it will be used for your glory we thank you lord for each one of us lord in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Zali. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. All the best for your uh, assignment. All right. Bye for now. We'll see you in the next class.